Hong Kong was once celebrated as a beacon for press freedom in Asia. But as China tightens its grip on the city, journalists fear they can no longer speak truth to power. Today is a very dark day to all journalists in Hong Kong. We have to guess what is the limit of free speech in Hong Kong. What can you say? What can you not say? Newsrooms have been raided. Publishers, journalists and media executives put behind bars. And news organisations forced to shut. It has become a dangerous occupation. A dangerous occupation for people who are still interested in reporting the facts. The government insists it's just doing its job. Journalists and media organisations like all of us have to respect and comply with the law. 101 East tracks the demise of Hong Kong's free media. For two and a half decades, Apple Daily was a constant in the lives of many Hong Kongers. The best-selling tabloid redefined the city's news industry with its brash, often sensational reporting. It was also an unabashed supporter of democracy and a firm critic of the Chinese Communist Party. Founder Jimmy Lai was a regular at pro-democracy protests. The billionaire is now in jail for taking part in unlawful assemblies. He's also accused of breaking Hong Kong's sweeping national security law, a charge that could see him put away for life. Lai knew the legislation could be used against him, but he chose to remain in Hong Kong. He spoke to Al Jazeera while out on bail. This place, the freedom, has given me the opportunity to create what I have today. I'm in debt to this place. I'm very grateful to this place. I'm not going to leave. Maybe now for time to, for me to pay back this place. Even the paying back means that I have to sacrifice. Apple Daily was able to survive and even thrive because of Hong Kong's unique history. Britain handed its former colony back to China in 1997. It was agreed that the city would be governed under a formula known as one country, two systems. Freedom of assembly, of expression and of the press are enshrined in Hong Kong's own constitution. Journalist Steve Vines arrived in Hong Kong 10 years before the handover. Today, he still remembers a time when Beijing kept its promises. Hong Kong had this heady air of liberty. You could say what you liked, read what you liked, you could travel freely. And into that heady mixture was this extraordinary, large media. But Hong Kongers did not have democracy. And for years, millions of people campaigned peacefully for the right to vote in fully free elections. Then, in 2019, increasing fears that China was eroding Hong Kong's autonomy and judicial independence sparked months of massive, sometimes violent, protests. The national security law, which criminalizes terrorism, secession, subversion and collusion with foreign forces, was introduced in 2020. Critics feared it would stifle dissent and Hong Kong's cherished freedoms. The government disagreed. Less than two months later, 200 police raided Apple daily. 
journalist inside live streamed this footage. Officers searched the newsroom, arrested a senior executive, and led a handcuffed Jimmy Lai through the building. I know what I'm doing is right. Even when I was handcuffed, you know, they parade me here and there, you know, in a handcuff, and I did not feel a, a shred of insult. He was accused of colluding with foreign forces. Well, I definitely have met foreign officials, but if this is collusion, I cannot have it. It might be a, a collusion talking to you now, accepting your interview. You know, it's just totally according to what they, what they define it. Lai was released after being detained for more than 40 hours. He would be arrested again several months later on fraud allegations and his bail revoked. To journalist Chris Cheng, the implications of the raid were clear. News media in Hong Kong were powerful. They have been influencing public opinion for many years. Say if you have a government scandal to disclose, the first thought, most likely, you would go to Apple Daily. They're going to tell you what you need to know. They're going to give you a different side uh, of the views. And maybe that's just not allowed by the government. Hong Kong's journalists soon discovered that activities once considered routine were now not allowed. In November 2020, authorities charged documentary filmmaker Bao Choi with making false statements to obtain data. She had been investigating a mob attack against anti-government demonstrators, journalists and passers-by that took place during the 2019 protests. Police arrived only after the violence had subsided, fueling allegations of misconduct. Who were the white-clad men attacking ordinary people in the West Rail station? On the evening of 7:21, a Choi's award-winning documentary attempts to uncover the truth of what happened that night. Hong Kong Connection made car license plate checks and found out several... As part of her research, she used a public database to track down owners of cars filmed in the vicinity of the attack. The vehicle's registered owner is Tang Fai Tai, a village representative... Police said she'd made a false statement in order to get that information. Choi pleaded not guilty, but the judge disagreed. She was ordered to pay a fine of around $770. To me, it's a very heartbreaking that the magistrate or the court ruled that searching public information or access to public data is no longer uh, allowed in Hong Kong. Because of her brush with the law, Choi was suspended from her freelance position at public broadcaster RTHK. For decades, the organization had operated with relative autonomy. But now, it was facing growing scrutiny from the government. In February 2021, the government announced that this man would be the new head of RTHK. Patrick Lee was a civil servant with no journalism or broadcasting experience. From day one, directives were issued. We were told that every program would be carefully examined for its content before it went out on air. They were interested to make sure that you didn't interview anybody who would be described as a government critic. Vines was a familiar presence on RTHK. Hello and welcome to The Pulse. He was a political affairs commentator on radio and for 15 years host of the popular current affairs talk show, The Pulse. We've asked all the candidates to give their views on major... A programme where diverse views were regularly heard and challenged. 
But we didn't expect that the police would use such a violence to oppress us. Vine says things changed with Lee's appointment. It was becoming ridiculous. We couldn't really do what I consider serious work. There were so many taboo subjects that it was just safer to do something that, that didn't upset anybody. Oh, and by the way, didn't really interest anybody either. From the team and me, it's been our honour. The Pulse and several other RTHK programmes have since been taken off air. In an email to 101 East, RTHK said it enjoys editorial independence at the corporate level and upholds the highest professional standards of journalism. It also said its new editorial process was working effectively and that programme-related complaints had dropped significantly. The broadcaster declined to comment on Bao Choi's case. In June 2021, authorities raided Apple Daily's headquarters a second time. Inside, journalists scrambled to live stream the raid. An official from the National Security Department addressed members of the press. The five Apple Daily employees made the front page of their own newspaper the following day. Their alleged crime, publishing articles calling on members of the international community to impose sanctions on China and the Hong Kong government. Authorities also froze assets belonging to Apple Daily and its related companies, as well as accounts linked to founder Jimmy Lai. Less than a week later, police arrested another Apple Daily employee, this time an opinion writer. The same day, the newspaper announced it was printing its final edition. For many Apple Daily journalists, the decision came as no surprise. For security reasons, we're not identifying this reporter. As news of the impending closure spread, supporters began to gather outside Apple Daily's headquarters. Inside the newsroom, the mood was tense. Still, the work continued. The plan was to go big with a print run of a million copies, ten times what they would normally sell in a day. Outside, the crowd continued to swell despite the rain. They'd come from all over Hong Kong to this remote industrial estate just to say goodbye. Even 
子其實係陪著每一個香港人嘅一齊成長，終於都要走埋呢一步，誒、呃、都要過嚟。雖然自己做唔到啲乜嘢，但係都係一個精神嘅支持。Their work was finally done. 26 years after its founding, Apple Daily was finished. Senior editors Lam Man Chung and Chan Pui Man thanked their team. The two were charged with national security law violations just weeks later. They are now behind bars and could face life sentences. Outside, Apple Daily staff thanked the supporters who'd come to say goodbye. They gave out copies of the final edition of the paper. The headline, Hong Kongers bid a painful farewell in the rain. Fifteen kilometers away, long lines were starting to form. It was just past midnight, but thousands of people were out, waiting to buy the last edition of Apple Daily. For some, Queuing was also an act of support for press freedom. Three days after the closure of Apple Daily, authorities arrested the editor of its English news section. Feng Wai Kong was at the airport about to leave for the United Kingdom. That was the last rule for me. Now journalists, uh, for whatever reasons, could be stopped at the airport and get arrested as well. So that could happen to anyone. Chris Cheng left Hong Kong weeks later, joining dozens of other journalists who'd fled since the introduction of the national security law. He now lives in London. Do you miss Hong Kong? I do, obviously. Cheng counts himself lucky, though. He's able to continue working as a freelance journalist here. Some of his colleagues back in Hong Kong have quit the profession altogether, hoping to steer clear of the law. After Apple Daily was closed, there were other people who carried on as a taxi driver, all kinds of jobs. Maybe there's a way out, but it just feels like it's too um, dangerous to stay on. You don't know whether or not some, at some point they will go back and look at what you have done in the past. Okay. After more than 30 years in Hong Kong, Steve Vines has also moved back to the UK. I'd still prefer to be in Hong Kong, but that's not going to happen, I don't think. So basically, he decided to leave after receiving a warning from an acquaintance. He laid out what he thought was the likely succession of events, and it was frankly very scary, very scary. It was excruciatingly difficult to leave. I know this sounds wishy-washy, but I do love Hong Kong. High-profile journalists and those working for pro-democracy outlets aren't the only ones who have fled Hong Kong. Virginia Mack was a reporter at an online news website that's largely seen as pro-establishment. In January 2021, a post on her personal Facebook page caught the public's attention. In it, Mack highlighted how a COVID-19 lockdown was affecting lower-income people in her neighborhood. 
In a subsequent post, she criticised the contents of a food parcel distributed by the government. She came to London with just two bags and her press pass. Yes. That has been a long time ago. Yeah. But Mac is no longer a journalist. She now works as a secretary at a law firm. In Hong Kong, the crackdown continues. At the end of 2021, 200 national security police raided Stand News, a pro-democracy news website. Seven current and former staff and board members were arrested. According to National Security Police, they'd allegedly conspired to publish inflammatory materials. Police also raided the home of Deputy Assignment Editor Ronson Chan. Chan, who is also chairperson of the Hong Kong Journalists Association, was taken in for questioning but released without charge. Hours after the raid, Stan News announced it would cease operations. Days later, independent news site Citizen News said it too was shutting down. Chief editor Daisy Lee blamed Hong Kong's new environment. One on One East contacted Chief Executive John Lee for comment. In an email, a spokesperson said the government was firmly committed to safeguarding the freedoms of the press and speech. But these rights can be restricted for reasons including protection of national security. The government said the media landscape in Hong Kong is as vibrant as ever. It's clear many disagree. Press freedom in Hong Kong is only going to get worse and worse, and we may have to rely on more and more on uh, overseas news outlets. More and more, Hong Kongers overseas have also been speaking up. It's an extraordinary thing that if you want to talk about Hong Kong nowadays, you have to go overseas to do so freely. All regimes that want to control the narrative of what they're doing feel that the, one of their main duties is to control the media. And this is being done with great vigor. It is now a very dangerous thing to be a journalist in Hong Kong. Press freedom for.